like many other common grounders and other people who went down to serve uh, New Orleans, it was just something in, in our soul and our spirit burning. We had to get there. You know, I had to come down here and see about my people. Sincere Ali Shakur is well known as a co-founder of Common Ground Relief in New Orleans. Sincere Ali Shakur of the Common Ground Collective led the sit-in. King says when negotiations fail, direct action is, is automatically the next step. When I got there, I met Malik Rahim. Malik Rahim, co-founder of the Common Ground Collective, one of the founders of the Louisiana chapter of the Black Panther Party before that. We'll be right here and you can spread the news that we have medics here that's uh, gonna offer free medical service okay. for anyone. He told me how dangerous it was for a black male to be there. There was only something like 40 well-armed white vigilantes that at the point that I got there had murdered uh, 19 young black people. We shot him. They were looters. I gotta go. Don't go into you know? a white woman's home and tell her you're gonna take it over. No. 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 Yeah, riding down the street, you loot, we shoot. Things have changed, times have changed, people have changed, man. <laughs> You're still the same, yeah, though, man, right? I sure hope so. How you doing? Oh, man, we're doing all right. Right, right, right. Let's see what we're trying to do. I see that, I yeah. see that. So we got, we got trucks to unload. So today, stuff happened, and then people are going to talk about it. It's just open up a space where we can talk about our fears and our feelings about this. I have a lot of feelings about it myself. Well, any contributions they need to make, they need to bring them on. Come be a part of this, help us rebuild. Because we, we really have to do it ourselves, baby. Brick by brick, house by house, block by block. As you all know right now, we don't have any hospitals really to go to. The health clinic saw and serviced over 100 people yesterday. So who would have served them if, if we wouldn't have been there? We've done um, a lot of routine blood pressure screenings, a lot of blood glucose screenings. We've done emergency care in people's homes. Whether it was just clearing out flooded furniture or gutting entirely the, the homes from the, from the flooded wall and connecting with as many of the owners and former residents as we can to make sure that what they want to happen to their property is what gets done. There's a, a series of illegal evictions that are going on where um, Various landlords in the New Orleans area want to take advantage of the fact that there's rising rental prices for their property. Your actions speak for itself. And I know what this collective action has shown, that we truly stand for peace and justice. At one point, we had seven clinics running, right? We also had nine distribution centers. We were working with the First Nations communities all along the Gulf Coast. Any given week, there could be 2,000 people on the ground from around here and coming from around the country working on 150 projects or programs at, at any time between 2005 and 2008. From my time in, in New Orleans in the Lower Ninth, I was working with Common Ground. I got there two years after Katrina, and when I got there, I was really shocked to see the poor condition. In the four years after Katrina, Common Ground served over 200,000 people. To this day, serves as a model for disaster response from Indonesia to New York. I was a co-founder of a project called the Common Ground Collective, which began after Hurricane Katrina uh, in 2005 in New Orleans and in the Gulf Coast region. I would argue that it was the largest anarchist-inspired organization in modern U.S. history. Like, even FEMA had mentioned the model of Common Ground Relief Collective, that, uh, that decentralized model being a way to get mass resources to people immediately rather than waiting for government bodies to respond. Well, one thing about, you know, being there in New Orleans, we were around a bunch of, a whole lot of amazing human beings. You wasn't by yourself. When push come to shove, we were all one. We were all the same spirit. The market's not going to save us. The nonprofit industrial complex, the state, they've always abandoned the people to disaster and ruin. Whatever we see that needs to be done, we have to do. We do have a hope for survival, and it comes from each other. You ever been walking down a, a street on a sidewalk, and then you're on all the cement, and all of a sudden you see a little plant or a little flower blooming out of that cement? You know, and, and it, you know, and uh, it might stop you in your tracks, and you say, "But well, oh, look at it! How in the world this little plant broke through all that concrete to emerge itself?" And you'll find people uh, that that don't even have conscious will walk and see that little plant and walk around it. You know, I mean, for no other, they don't have no reason why they walked around it. Only thing that they could is just that respect. You know, 
And that's what I would like to see common ground be. That would be that little area where, where a person could see that, 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 have that respect. Why? Because that respect is not for common ground. That respect is for hope. And that's what common ground is all about. It's all about restoring hope. If it weren't for this young lady right here, turn around, sir. And another young lady, we wouldn't have no food back here. We wouldn't have nothing. Nobody would have come back here. Nobody. I take supplies, go to poor neighborhoods, and give it to poor people. We want to thank you for everything that you're doing for everybody back here.